Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. And we are live here in Las Vegas at the Sands Expo, wrapping up our coverage here. Reinvent three days strong here, going with uh, AWS and a number of great partners uh, within their ecosystem. One of those is Fortinet, and uh, we're now joined by Matt Play, who is the VP of Cloud Carrier and Service Providers there at Fortinet. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Good to awesome. see you, sir. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank um, you. Tell us a little bit about, you know, first off, what you do uh, sure. at, as far as the company's concerned, and about your relationship with AWS. I know you're exhibiting just over our shoulder here, so. Right. Uh, this, is, this is a big week for you and for them. It's, I mean, the energy here is unlike any other event I've been to. It's fantastic. I mean, it's, you can't even describe what this feels like. You have to really be here to really appreciate it. So, uh, it, it's just been, it's my first show um, uh, being here and it's just absolutely you know, great to see all the companies sort of collaborating, people getting together and working together. So from a show perspective, I mean, it's just fantastic. So we're just happy to be a part of it and uh, Fortinet is uh, you know, doing a lot of great things with AWS. I think our, our synergies are, are really well aligned. Um, we have a lot of commonality in our DNA and our culture and history. So, you know, we love to, we're innovators, we love technology, and we really hang our hat on that. So, as a security ISV, you can see, you know, the products, that's always important, right? The products that are involved in it, but it's really about the theory or philosophy behind it that we, we really, I think, um, we look towards to accelerate our partnership. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know how much booth time you spend, uh, but I'm just always curious, it shows, you know, what's the chatter about? You know, when people come up, what are they most interested about? You know, what's been like, you th in your mind, maybe that overall theme or that recurring theme that you're hearing a lot from yeah. potential customers here? Yeah, it's, it, it's really diverse. I mean, so it's not just one talk track, it's really a number of different points or elements or what's important. You know, you, see, you look around, you see IOT, you see DevOps, you see you know, a number of different things that are kind of bubbling up, and you see all the announcements from uh, AWS and Bare Metal, so that's going to change things quite a bit. So it's, it was really <laughs> surprising to see, you know, some of our announcements this week were really important. You've had a big week. We had a great week. Yeah. Um, we had some really special things that we've been working on that got announced this week. You know, Fortis Sandbox is in, uh, on demand now. Uh, in uh, AWS, and so that we're the only sandbox available in AWS. That's, I think that's very compelling, um, and that's a pretty useful thing. You know, uh, the WAF rules, uh, that was a launch yesterday that happened, and uh, we're part of the rule set, so you can take some of our rule sets. It goes out to our FortiGuard, enforces it. Uh, and then finally, they became a fabric partner. And so what the fabric really is for us is an ecosystem of products, but not only our products, it's really about working with other uh, collaboration partners, but sometimes competitors, and that's okay with us because we believe that that's the only really way security is going to be effective. Yeah, we were talking before and you were explaining some of the portfolio approach that, that Fortinet takes to, to security. Yeah, we, we've always been talking about defense in depth as being a thing that you should do with security, and, and really there is no like one magic silver bullet that you can use. You have to have different tools for different use cases, and you've got lots of different products that all work well together, but they also right. work well with other products, which is quite interesting, that, that fabric concept. Could you maybe you know, give us a a bit more color on, on what the fabric is and some of the portfolio Absolutely. products that plug in. So to your first point, um, we have eight products in uh, AWS and available, and it's really about creating a, a security stack of enforcement, because one product necessarily won't do the entire job you need it to do. So we have complementary products, we have um, you know, bespoke or, or pointed products. Um, so we have, like I was saying, eight, that's the most out of any other security ISV in the marketplace today. So that's, I think, a huge competitive advantage. And really what, why that's important is that you really need to see, have a single pane of glass console to look at your environments. Yeah. Statistics say around 65% of organizations or enterprises will have a hybrid environment. So kind of the legacy bespoke uh, or, or the legacy uh, traditional networks. And then they're going to have, you know, obviously AWS instances. And it's really important for security, that correlation and automation, to see across your entire network and footprint that you have. So, you know, really all the products to us are all the same, whether you deploy them on-premise, off-premise, 
in the cloud, private cloud, public cloud, really doesn't matter to us. It's all the same sort of look and feel for our products. Yeah, I am hearing from all the security people, both on the vendor and on the customer side that I speak to, that there is a real collaboration going on in security right now. And we were talking just before we went to air that yeah. the, the security has just is blown up in the last sort of four or five years. What used to be a bit of an afterthought is now front of mind for a lot of customers. So they're, they're using some of the products like Fortinet to be able to say, well, I want to solve this and this is something I need to do today, but I also need it to work with other things that I'm doing. So it's interesting that Fortinet's chosen to take that, that partnering approach, and particularly with something like your relationship with AWS, with the web application firewalls that you're doing. That's a real partnership approach, where you're saying, well, we do something quite well, but Amazon can use this to give us uh, access to more and more customers. Is that part of Fortinet's like, core core way of doing things? Is that, has that always been that guy? Yeah, I think you know the, the, the history and, and sort of DNA of, of Fortinet, it was kind of founded on let's, let's do it ourselves, let's build it, because we believe that we can build it the best. Um, and so, you know, kind of through the generation of that, like you said, you know, security is one of those things that it was sort of geeky and kind of cool and sort of specific. Like people didn't really understand security all that well. Yeah. But now it's, it's headline news and it changes um, market cap literally overnight, right? We see that a lot in the, in, in, you know, the, the, the news and unfortunately some nasty things happen to people's information. Um, so if you look at that, our, our, you know, our CFO said, talked about digital trust a number of years ago. And it's really, you want to do, you want to do business with companies that you trust. Yeah. And that's, that's so important. So when you give your credit card information, your social security number, that's important, right? You want somebody to take, um, I think, caution when, when jotting down that information, right? So uh, for us, we saw it as a, a competitive advantage because how it really started for us before the fabric was threat information sharing. So yeah. we have an initiative where we work with others in the marketplace um, who are security vendors to share our threat data yeah. and to make that more useful for companies because um, really that's w what's going to win. And, and, and you know, sharing and, and uh, looking at the portfolio, it really goes back to our FortiGuard platform. Everything kind of points back to that as far as the uh, threat the threat vectors, right? Yeah, yeah you, you mentioned that you know, there, there have been problems. I mean, obviously, uh, there's yeah. a, like a headline a week, right? And, and that's, that's kind of the, the point of the question I want to get at here with you, is in a way, I, I think from a consumer standpoint, we're almost desensitized a little bit because, oh God, here, another one, right? We just have Another one. breach, yeah. another problem. So, yeah. I mean, what kind of mindset are you fighting in terms of, you can have a thousand wins, but one loss, or, or a million wins, right? But one loss, it's another headline, it's another problem, and, and um, it's another barrier for you, right? I mean, you, yeah. I mean, how do you look at that from a philosophical approach as a company and a mindset approach as a that's, company? That's a great question, right? And so there is kind of this, I think in the industry, there's this consensus that it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Absolutely. And so yep. that's, oh, I think a little hard to stomach, right? You yep. know, you're saying, hey look. Because you want to win them all. Right, yeah, you want to win 100% <laughs> of the time, and that's just the reality Especially of life, these, right? Yeah. yeah, of course, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, of course, uh, for, for us, we look at it as a, as a layered approach, right? So if, if you, I'll use a very simple analogy, but I think it's sort of effective. But if you lock your front door, if you lock your windows, if you put on your alarm system, you have cameras, and then ideally you live in a gated neighborhood. They're just layers to ensure that if someone comes by to look at your environment and they go, man, that's just too hard, it's too much work. There's cameras there, I can tell, they have a dog. It's, it's way too complicated, I, I'm not getting into that. And that's what security really should be. Security should be a multi-layer approach that, um, that uses complementary products that coordinate and orchestrate together and automate. And those are really important things uh, when it comes to security and keeping the bad guys out. So you sort of want to have this uh, security posture that just so many layers of defense that it's very hard to penetrate. So when someone's thinking about what, what they've currently got and they're like looking at the threat model that they might have and they're looking at what their risk would be at the moment, how would you help customers to eval evaluate, well, what should I do next? Like, we were, we were talking with someone else on theCUBE earlier today about, okay, you need to do the basics first, so you need to brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. How do you help customers identify what is the locking your front door, what is the I need to buy a dog, what is the right. I need to make sure I've got all my windows locked? So how do you help customers figure that That's out? That's a great question. So always when we talk with customers, we evaluate their environment, right, very bespoke, and 
and sort of custom tailored, right? That's very important to understand exactly what you're trying to solve. However, just like your credit score, we believe that there should be a security competency score, right? So it's sort of an in-depth evaluation of your network, uh, the holistic security posture, how that looks. Um, and so we're now offering that and our new platform is to come in and offer um, sort of a security threat score, if you will, to say how effective we think you are. So I think that helps. It's like a maturity model. What, what's that? It's like a maturity model. Yep. Yeah. Exactly, so I think that's going to help a lot of people make sense out of it, and yeah. there's different parameters in how we report that back to our customers that sort of makes sense, and we say, well, we believe these products should be the products that you choose, and this is kind of security posture you have, and you know, the reality is, is that if you're connected to the internet, you have to get out and some things need to get in. Yeah. So you just have to have that layered approach. But it used to be like it was a cost decision, you know, way back then. Now reputation's on the line. You said market cap, as you pointed out. I mean, the risks and, and the exposure and the damage is exponentially worse today than it was just three, four years ago, right? I, I think it even seems different from like six months ago. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's really insane to think that companies could disappear based upon uh, what happens with that, that information. Um, I, that's, we don't want to be the ambulance chaser, right? That's not, that's not our philosophy, but it's about being protected and it's about being, I think, you know, with security, retrospectively going back is not all that useful. It, yeah. With security, it's better to kind of take the work and do it up front. Uh, and, and we believe that um, that's what's really changing in the market. That pivot to when you design a network, security is arm in arm with networking or you know, in, in this case, in AWS's case, you know, how you, you move workloads elastically to the cloud. I mean, those are all considerations now. And I think you see that in the marketplace and uh, AWS's um, launch, like we said, in the, the WAF rules. I think that, that's one step closer to really marrying security with just the function of what you're trying to do in the cloud. Yeah, and it needs to evolve over time as well. So you start, again, you start with the basics and then even as your business changes, like you might be in completely on site today, but if you go to cloud, well now I need to do cloud-based security things. You have to start thinking about it in a different way. So hopefully customers are looking at things and looking at the portfolio approach and saying, okay, today I might need one product, but tomorrow I'm going to need, well, I'm going to need something else. I'm going to need two or three or four. And as you say, if I've got something that works, that plays well with others, then I can make a decision yesterday that, well, actually, no, I can use, I can still use this. I don't suddenly have to throw everything that I did a year ago to right. throw it all away and start again from scratch. Sure, absolutely. And that's the fun of what we do. Working in technology, it moves so fast. That's why we all do it, I think, because it's to be close to it and to be a part of it, I mean, that's why I get up every day. It's, it's, it's the coolest thing we get to do, right? Yeah. And so because of that, you're right. I, we don't even know what's going to happen in 2019, right? How, I mean, think about the change in just one year's time. The velocity and what we're seeing that AWS is accomplishing in short periods of time, you really need to, uh, to move quickly. And um, that's our commitment, absolutely, as a security company. I was going to say, unfortunately, you're busy, right? And fortunately, you're busy, but, it, yeah. but because the risks are greater, the threats are bigger, so uh, all the more reason uh, for the success that you've had, obviously, and continued success. We wish you that, and uh, thank you for being here on theCUBE. We appreciate the time. Thanks for having time. me. Yeah, always good to see you. Uh, that wraps up our coverage here on theCUBE for my colleague, uh, Mr. Warren, and all of us behind the scenes. Thank you for joining us here live from AWS reInvent in Las Vegas.